good to see you uh, on this Wednesday morning and of course I hope that uh, you're well whatever you're watching us from this is your world and my name is Winnie Lubembe so much to cover within this hour so I hope that you will stick around until the end of the conversation because today we want to understand the TV burden right here in the country because as we all know world TB day is usually marked on the 24th day of March every single year but of course again like we always say we are always ahead of things okay so we want to start the conversation today and of course just get to understand where are we um you know as far as the TB burden in the country is concerned are we seeing an increase in the numbers are we seeing a decrease in the numbers? What are some of the latest interventions? It's a lot, all right, to cover during this one hour. So like I said, you want to stick around until the end of the show. But if you're watching us and of course you want to contribute to the conversation in one way or the other, either you want to share your story or you have a question, the panel is here to answer all your questions. So at NTV Kenya, both on Facebook and on Twitter, is how you can reach us and tag me as well at lubembe underscore winnie so let me introduce my guests uh for today and of course i'm gonna begin on my immediate left this is left right <laughs> and of course we have dr margaret njenga who's the acting ceo ps kenya good to see you this morning how are you doing i'm doing great Karibu pleasure to be sana. here Karibu Karibu. Sana. and of course next to her we have jerusha anyango odor who is a tb champion and of course she is here to share her experience and her story so that again um to help us really better understand um you know TB, all right, and of course, Jerusha Asante Sana, uh, you know, for making your time to be with us uh, this morning. And of course, last but not least, we have Elizabeth Mueni, who is a county TB coordinator, Nairobi County Government. So good to see you, mm -hmm. Karibu Sana. Thank you. Um, on the show and of course we're just gonna start with uh, the day right and that is the world tb day which again like i said usually marked on the 24th day of march 2023 so dr margaret let's just start um with you right tb and what exactly does this day mean to us i know we are like two days <laughs> ahead mm -hmm. uh, you know of the day but what exactly does it mean and where are we as a country fantastic mm -hmm. tb is one of the leading causes of death yeah and uh, in Kenya, it's actually ranked the fourth. Mm -hmm. It is a big burden. If you look at the year 2022, yeah. in this country, we diagnosed up to 90,000 cases of TB, okay. which is a big issue. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. people are not talking about it okay. as much as we want people to talk about it, because mm -hmm. indeed, there's a lot that can be done mm -hmm. to reduce this uh, TB burden. Okay. Then out of, out of these 90,000 cases mm -hmm. that were diagnosed in the year 2022, right. the government estimates that up mm -hmm. to 40 percent of cases were missed mm. okay. so there's still so much more there are many people out there who have <coughs> tb mm -hmm. they don't know they have it mm -hmm. yet there has been so much advancements there's treatment yeah. for tb mm -hmm. it's very easy to diagnose it mm -hmm. and there's a lot that really needs to be done so mm -hmm. as we prepare for world tb day yeah we want the conversation. We want people to talk about it, to be yeah. aware that it can be diagnosed, it can be treated. Mm -hmm. And the theme mm -hmm. for this year mm -hmm. for and for TB is that yes, we can end TB. Absolutely. It is not a one person's affair, but yeah. it's about Collective multiple affair. Yes. exactly our yeah. stakeholders really mm -hmm. coming together towards working towards ending mm -hmm. TB. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course we'll figure out why exactly do we experience cases of stigma, I mean for TB because like malaria, we hardly see people being stigmatized for malaria yeah. or any other um, you know, disease or condition. So why exactly do we have a lot of cases of stigma, especially when it comes to um, you know, TB? Of course, Jerusha, you'd also tell us whether you experienced any form of stigma um, you know, or not as far as um, TB is concerned. But of course, Elizabeth, for you, just mm -hmm. take us through, because majority of the times we hear the word TB mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Even a small child can sing the word yes. TB, right? Yes. But then again, sometimes understanding what exactly the disease is all about what are the symptoms to be you know on the lookout for mm. can you just help us really understand that so that we have a better understanding okay. um, you know when it comes to uh, TB. thank you so much mm. and uh, as you said uh, tb has been there for mm. a very long time yeah. it's a airborne uh, disease mm. and uh, we have the cardinal signs for tb right. which is cough and we usually say cough of any duration because you find the people that are coming to the hospital mm. you cannot come to hospital because of a day cough 
So it's call for venue duration and mm. children that are coming. The, the presentation for children is a bit different. Mm. So we have cardinal sign that is a cough mm. and a night sweat. And this night sweat is a severe night sweat, not the normal night sweat yeah. until a drenching night sweat. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, weight loss because mm -hmm. it's a chronic disease. You'll mm -hmm. find somebody has lost a lot of uh, weight mm -hmm. and uh, it's a bacterial disease. Mm -hmm. So this person come with a fever mm -hmm. and the fever that we have in TB, it's not the high peak fevers. Okay. Okay. It's intermittent fever, fever that comes and goes, come and goes. Mm -hmm. And this is a patient you find they have cough for maybe a week, uh, they are sick, there are people who have used other drugs, and as Dr. Margaret said, mm -hmm. we are really missing uh, TB cases mm -hmm. because of the presentation of the TB. You mm -hmm. find people consider cough as a normal. Oh, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. cough is not mm -hmm. normal. Today you cough, you'll not go to the hospital immediately. You yeah. try your own remedies before oh, yes. going to the hospital. Self -medication, and those we are yes. seeing at the hospital, mm -hmm. They'll tell you this is a cough of one day, which okay. is not a cough of one day. There yeah. are people who have been sick. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to take a very important once you're coughing, mm -hmm. uh, just not could be a TB. Uh, children presentation is a bit different, especially mm -hmm. the young ones. You'll yeah. find that they're not gaining weight properly. Mm -hmm. So they have delayed maston. Mm -hmm. These are children that are, are not playfulness. Mm -hmm. They are dull uh, in their <coughs> own uh, way. Mm -hmm. So that one is, uh, is what I can say. But uh, one thing to note, mm -hmm. uh, cough is one of the major major sign okay. that uh, we are really looking mm -hmm. and uh, we have night sweat mm -hmm. we have the fever the fever yes. uh, chest pain mm -hmm. and also now the weight loss okay yeah. and you know again like you rightly put most of the symptoms i mean they mimic so yes. many other yes. um, you know issues and majority of us uh, would easily look for you know uh what dawa Yes. Right? It's Very one of the important. things that we usually run to, yeah. you know, in, in terms of self-medicating. But when you talk about the cough specifically, because mm. you said this is one of the key symptoms that, yes. um, you know, you, you look out for, mm. we usually hear people say, I have a dry cough, mm. you know, when I cough, my chest is, 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 is mm. in pain and all those things. So mm. is there like a specific type of cough? that no. you look at or cough is a cough no. a cough is a cough okay a cough is a cough mm -hmm. is uh now when we come to the diagnosis because we usually uh use the sputum okay to diagnose a tb mm -hmm. but you'll have uh as a, i'm going to talk about it uh, there are different type of tb yes you can get tb outside the lungs eh? mm -hmm. which uh the cough will be dry even some will come without a cough Mm -hmm. and they have TB yeah. because of the presentation outside the lung. Yes. So the cough that is in the lung, mm -hmm. uh, the, the TB that is in the lung, mm -hmm. what we call pulmonary TB, mm -hmm. they present with that cough. But mm -hmm. once it has gone uh, outside the, the pulmonary, mm -hmm. then some will not even have the cough. Okay, yeah. I see that. All right, mm -hmm. and of course we'll come back to really understand the different, different okay. types that you said. Okay, okay. so Jerusha, let's go back to May 2021, mm -hmm. right? So you were diagnosed with drug-resistant tuberculosis. Could you just take us back uh, then? What happened? What are some of the symptoms that you presented with um, to the hospital? Yes, it was on 2021 May. Mm -hmm. I became sick and sick. Everybody, when I go to job, people tell me, Jerusa, you are not well, go to hospital. Okay. But I feared going to public hospital because I thought if I go there, mm -hmm. They delay me, but I lose my job. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to chemist, yeah. buy drugs. I, I used to uh -huh. take these drugs for several times. Okay. Then it came a time that drugs is not now working on my body. Mm -hmm. So it forces me to go to a public facility. Okay. Uh, being that I, I stay at Dandora, mm -hmm. Dandora Phase 4, mm -hmm. I went to a public hospital there called Dandora 2 Health mm -hmm. Center. Mm -hmm. And when I go there, they took me to the laboratory and directly take a, take, took me to a, a TB mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. And when the doctors of TB there looked at me, they mm -hmm. tested my kikohozi, mm -hmm. then they found it is a TB. Okay. Not just a TB, but a DRTB, yeah. a multiple drug resistant TB. Okay. So they looked at me, I was very weak, mm -hmm. TB has affected me mm -hmm. for several times. Yeah. So it was my first TB, I never had TB before. Yeah. Then they directed me to go to Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm -hmm. They told me, don't go back to house. Take this go letter, to go to Ken Ken H. Yeah. Uh, I had my CMAG by that time. Mm -hmm. They took me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got when, when I went to Kenyatta, mm -hmm. they admitted me. Yeah. First, I was taken to ward eight. Mm -hmm. uh, when they were still 
testing which is the kind of disease that is affecting me. Yeah. Then they found it is a DRTV. Mm -hmm. I was now taken to isolation ward. I see that. I mm. see that. Okay. All right. So, but in May is when you got your actual diagnosis. But before then, you said you were sick and you would mm -hmm. go to a chemist, you know, buy mm. drugs here and there mm. and all those things. So what exactly were you, like, did you notice? Did you notice, you know, what Elizabeth said? Yes. Usiku kilala, a lot of sweating and all those things. Yes. Yeah. I was... I was feeling fatigue. Okay. My joints were weak. Yeah. I was coughing every day. Mm. Even if I'm at job, people are now scaring. I was mm. coughing every time. Yeah. I, I, I was feeling hot, mostly okay. at night. Yeah. Uh, I told my children, mm -hmm. please open the door, open the window so mm -hmm. that I can feel mm -hmm. a bit fresh. Okay. But it fails mm -hmm. until I went to the hospital. Mm. It's where I got the solution. Mm, yes. I see that. And and um, Dr. Margaret, do you, do you just want to comment on what she said? That this is the first time she was actually diagnosed with TB, yeah. but now her diagnosis was mm. drug. You said multiple, multiple mm. drug resistant mm. yes. um, TB. TB. Is this? more of a burden that we're dealing with in the country that is the drug resistant or multiple drug resistant or what exactly happens and then i think elizabeth will comment mm. on you know the whole question of first time diagnosis yes. and you already you know diagnosed yes. with uh, yeah. drug resistant tb but yeah. let's start with you dr margaret yeah mm. yeah sure yeah a uh, drug resistant tb is one of the hardest mm. forms of tb to treat okay fortunately there is treatment that is readily available in the country mm -hmm. so some of the challenges that uh, we see which uh, jerusha has already pointed towards mm. is late diagnosis mm. yeah. So most people present in the first, either a pharmacy or mm. uh, the small clinics, yeah. and there they are misdiagnosed mm. often because they end up being treated maybe just for a normal cough mm. or very non-specific uh, symptoms. And then looking at TB as a disease by itself, yeah. sometimes, and Mweni has already mm. touched on this, mm. uh, about extra pulmonary TB. So yeah. TB does not affect the lungs only. Okay. It can affect every part of the, your body all right. except your hair and your nails mm. but every other part of your body can get tb okay and sometimes the symptoms are very non-specific and you find people go to hospital over and over and over again mm. but there's no diagnosis that is really being found mm -hmm. so that's where partners like ps kenya and many other ngos come in yeah. and working very closely with the government to mm. support in that so mm -hmm. as ps kenya mm. we work in the uh, we target the private sector okay. in addition to the public sector. So why the private sector? Mm -hmm. Because 50% of Kenyans access mm -hmm. healthcare services through the private, the private sector. sector that's true. And by the private sector, I don't mean the big hospitals. Mm -hmm. I mean the, the pharmacies, yeah. Yeah, the, private clinics. the private clinics. Yes. That's the first place mm -hmm. where if any of People us fall know. sick, that's yeah. the local doctor. And we see a crop of them good. in our estates, mm -hmm. you know, here exactly. and there. So, yeah, exactly. And sometimes yeah. they may be left out from the larger healthcare system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where we come in to support in training, mm -hmm. training them so that whenever anyone walks to that mm -hmm. uh, clinic or mm -hmm. pharmacy, yeah. they are able to have a high index of that's suspicion mm -hmm. and suspect this might not be the normal cough. It yeah. could be TB mm -hmm. and they link with other systems of the government mm -hmm. yeah, to be I able like to that. diagnose and yeah. also to get uh, treatment Absolutely. as well. Mm -hmm. Again, like you said, the symptoms mimic other yeah. things. So high index of suspicion will be really, really, I mean, okay, and exactly. especially when it comes to diagnosis. All right, Elizabeth, do you want to continue? Yes, I just yeah. want to add, and this mm -hmm. is very critical, just as what Jerusha has said, yeah. the way we say cough is considered normal, you can see that um, she had a delayed diagnosis yes. by going to different chemists, mm -hmm. and just as uh, Dr. Margaret said, they're mm -hmm. targeting the small chemists so yeah. that they can also refer mm -hmm. those patients come in for just a cough. Mm -hmm. And you can see by the time they come to the hospital, it's too late for mm -hmm. us. And uh, thank God she went to one of our public facilities and she was able to diagnose yeah. to have TB. Mm -hmm. So just to come to her, it's her first time she got a TB, mm -hmm. and I can say we have the natural resistant and acquired mm -hmm. in resistant, and also initial resistant. Okay. Uh, maybe she stayed with that contact she was a contact of somebody who had a drug resistant tb okay. when you stay too close with somebody who had a drug resistant tb you're most likely to get the resistant type of tb okay but we also have the natural resistant mm -hmm where this occurs even if you've never used drugs and this can mm -hmm. occur to any other form of uh, 
of uh, disease okay. uh, that uh, the bacteria usually multiply just the normal way it multiply mm -hmm. so it reaches a peak then it undergoes uh, the genomic mutation okay. so you'll find there's a mutant that come out that is resistant to the drugs mm -hmm. and this mutant multiply okay. so this occurs even without using the drugs mm -hmm. and some people we diagnose them the first time we diagnose they've never used the drug they mm -hmm. have this resistant type of TB mm -hmm. they could be a contact of somebody who had drug resistant TB mm -hmm. they had frequent uh, contact with these people mm -hmm. then they were able to get the resistant mm -hmm. type of TB okay. then we have the acquired one mm -hmm. acquired mean uh, you have used a TB medication before, before. Uh, okay. yeah maybe due to pure adherence mm -hmm. you have not uh, taken your medication yeah. well mm -hmm. uh, you're taking living taking living this selection mm -hmm. yeah the bacteria will change and mm -hmm. will be resistant to the, yeah. the drugs that we are using mm -hmm. so it's very important we even advise our patient and as you're going to see as we, we are going to talk about the treatment mm -hmm. once we start the treatment on tb medication mm -hmm. two weeks the patient feels very good yes because we target we kill the the active multiplying bacteria okay. so the patient will feel very much, better much better, better yeah. the cough will subside mm -hmm. but we need to target target even the dormant bacilli mm -hmm. uh, for tb we have the active and, and the, the dormant, dormant. Yeah. this dormant is the one that uh, later on can multiply and cause many complications okay. so we advise our patient once they feel better they need to take their medication mm -hmm. throughout the treatment so that we don't get uh, this type of acquired mm -hmm. resistance yeah. and there's yeah. also that aspect of exhaustion um, you yes. know for, for, for medication because we know yes. sometimes treatment yes. may take a bit of time yes. um, you know but again we'll, we'll talk about that as, as we continue in terms yes. of like the interventions and all those things yes, yes. Um, but very quickly um, I also come, came across drug susceptible is it yes. drug susceptible uh, TB, TB? Yes, yeah what exactly resistance. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just uh, maybe to start uh, with, we mm. have majorly two yeah. type of TB. Yes, the TB that is within the lung field, mm -hmm. what we call pulmonary. pulmonary yes. It's the most infectious because the patient is coughing, mm -hmm. they are emitting the bacilli mm -hmm. in the air. Yeah. Then as Dr. Margaret say, we have extra, extra mm -hmm. pulmonary TB. Mm -hmm. This is TB outside the lungs. You can get TB of the bone, TB of the brain, TB mm -hmm. of the heart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And the presentation is different. Except and your hair and your nails. Yes, thank <laughs> like you. Dr. Margaret Good said. For that, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then now we have a drug susceptible TB. Right. Uh, in normal treatment, the patient that we diagnose, treatment usually takes six months mm. of treatment. Okay, okay? Uh, That is uh, the patient, the, the drugs that we are using, uh, for six months your patient will be cured. Okay. okay? That is now the drug susceptible TB. TB okay? okay? A patient who doesn't have resistance. Mm -hmm. So when you use the normal drugs, mm -hmm. they get well, they feel better. After okay. six months, mm -hmm. we say the patient has been cured. Okay. Then now we have the drug resistant TB. Mm -hmm. uh, what Jerusha was saying yes, that yeah, she yeah. had. Mm -hmm. And this one, it means that the, the first line drugs have resistant. We cannot use the first line drugs. Okay. So we need to go to second line second drugs, line which line. take a longer period. Okay. Uh, we treat even uh, up to 20 months. Mm. Yes. Okay, and of course, with exhaustion comes in, yes, yes, <laughs> in, yes. in in that area. All right, let's go back to to Jerusha. So you were immediately admitted when you got to KNH, right? They yes. told you you cannot go back. Um, you cannot go back home. Um, and of course, you thought initially that uh, TB treatment would take like six months, and you're out of it, which is usually the case, right? For the is it for the susceptible? No, no, no. no? Be because no, she had drug resistance. No, no, no. Yes, yes. yes yeah. Yes. This other type of TB. Six, six months, months yes, you're good yeah, to go. But yeah. for her, you were what 18 to, 18 to 20, 20 months, months. Mm -hmm. take us through that period what was that like um, and first of all just being told that this is your diagnosis that you do not only just have tb but you have the dr multiple drug resistant mm -hmm. tb what was that like how did you receive that information in that period you know um, in the hospital immediately when i was taken to isolation tb yeah uh, I, the doctors brought for me counselors from knh mm -hmm. And they advised me that this uh, this TB you are having mm -hmm. it is not a normal TB, okay. it is a drug resistant TB. All right. So drug resistant TB, mm -hmm. you have to take a, a drug for 18 to 20, to 20 months. months. Yeah. But uh, this. How many? How many tablets? Maybe injections. All because those things? Yeah. there was no injection by that time. Yeah. Because I was having many complications, mm -hmm. TB affected my bladder. Uh -huh. So I used to take 24 tablets for the start. Oh, in a day wow. in a day so it was not easy journey mm -hmm. i used to cry for nurses yeah nurses have to twist the story so that i can take these drugs mm -hmm. 
They used to mobilize me. They mm -hmm. used to tell me, just take drugs. If mm -hmm. you don't take drugs, mm -hmm. you will be normal. Yeah. Uh, I, I go, go pick, pick the picture back. Mm -hmm. You have left your kids. Yes. By that time, I was having a kid of three, four years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you don't know where she is by now. Mm -hmm. Please, if you take these drugs well, mm -hmm. you will go back home. Okay. If you are alive. Mm -hmm. So... If you don't take drugs, the solution is death. Mm -hmm. So just take drugs. Mm -hmm. This will tell me everybody in this world is taking drugs. Not just for TB, but for other diseases. Other diseases yes. Some are having pressure, they mm -hmm. used to take their drugs. Some are, some are having sickle cell, they, have, they used to take their drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just take drugs. Yeah. So I used to take these drugs, but I used to wonder how long will I stay in this world yeah. without seeing my kids. Mm. I don't know where where they are, how, yeah. how they are at You have all. to constantly worry about your mm. children. By that yeah. time, even my brain, akiliangu mm. ilikuwa imeruka. So even I was, my phone was taken away from me. Okay. I was not having a phone. Mm. I don't know what is happening back. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I am. Because mm. in isolation, you are one person yeah. in one room. Mm -hmm. There you have a sink, you can wash your wash your eyes, mm -hmm. you can drink water. Mm -hmm. But I cannot go even that, to that sink. Mm -hmm. I used to call nurses. The reception is far away from yeah. these rooms. Yeah. Nobody will, will hear you. But there is an alarm you, if you, you point that alarm, mm -hmm. the nurse will the come. Nurses will, come. Yeah. Will, will give you what you want. Mm -hmm. They used to nap me with me. Mm -hmm. I, I, they were wearing me a Adult pamper. Diapers. pamper. Okay. Yeah. So I used to ask myself, am I now a child? Mm. Uh, and I said, it is me yeah. and me alone. Yeah. And it is me with my life. Yeah. And I asked God, give me another chance. I like that. And God, God gave me another chance. Yeah. Because my brothers, mm. they had lost top of me. Mm. If they saw me, mm. they said that this is not Jerusalem we knew. Mm -hmm. This is somebody else. Mm -hmm. Let us prepare for something eh? else. Okay. They had already lost hope of me. Yeah. By that time, I was saying, while well, I was staying single, mm -hmm. I was a single mom with mm -hmm. two kids. Mm -hmm. My firstborn was at class seven, mm -hmm. and you know those years, children were, were studying three months, mm -hmm. going to another classes. Mm -hmm. So I said, my child, the, the, if these people are telling me that I will stay in this world for even one year. Mm -hmm. And they used to tell me that there is somebody here who has stayed for two years mm -hmm. without going back home. Mm -hmm. So I used to say, will my daughter mm -hmm. even sit for her exams? Mm -hmm. Without you. Without me. Yeah. And I asked God that, please give me good health. Mm -hmm. I used to take these drugs. In that world, nobody was allowed to come and see you. Yeah except those nurses and doctors who are coming to see you. Mm -hmm. And if they come, they sit like that point you are sitting, mm -hmm. and you are on bed. Yeah. They talk to you. These counselors counsel you when they sit there. Mm -hmm. The only person who will touch you is a nurse. Okay. And a nurse will wear a mask. Yeah. Just make sure that they are well. For the prevention. Happen. Yeah. I mean, and, and I can totally understand that amount of time alone in isolation. It really can, it really can, you know, um, affect, you know, one's mental health. Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Margaret, I want you to really quickly um, talk on the role of counselors. Because again, mm -hmm. someone has to be on medication mm -hmm. for Jerusha's kids between 18 to 20 months alone mm -hmm. in isolation and all those things. Because majority of the times we just focus on Mezadawa, uh, you'll be okay, right? And then involving counselors, um, you know, I, I want you to speak on their role and how yeah. this helps when it comes to TB treatment. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, once someone is diagnosed with TB mm -hmm. and more so with drug resistance TB, mm -hmm. okay. one of the things that you see is that people tend to lose a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. And this is where, so they did extra support. And okay. that extra support needs somebody who is mm -hmm. properly trained yeah. and who has experience and has the ability mm -hmm. to support the patient. Mm -hmm. More so to be able to find local solutions to deal with whatever challenges that are there. And this is where adherence yes. come in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And adherence counselors um, really walk the journey with the 
patients. Yeah. Uh, if they are not able to take their drugs, mm -hmm. and some of the reasons uh, when it might not be possible to take the drugs is when you experience side effects. Yeah. Uh, like when you take um, these TB medications, side mm -hmm. effects is one of the common things. But mm -hmm. if you're to weigh the risks versus, versus the benefits, the benefits, yeah. the benefits really Out outweigh yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the risks. So mm -hmm. it's mandatory mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. treatment does continue. And this is where the adherence counselor comes in yeah. and walks that journey mm -hmm. with the patient. Okay. They are also, for clients who are out in the community, mm -hmm. they are also support groups that okay. are formed so that mm -hmm. these groups mm -hmm. come together and those who have walked the journey, mm -hmm. um, uh, good clients like Jerusha mm -hmm. who have really who have a yeah. very impactful story to yeah. share, they are able to encourage many others mm -hmm. to complete that cycle of okay. treatment mm -hmm. because if the clients fail to complete their treatment, mm -hmm. then the TB becomes even more, more resistant uh, yeah. and there's risk of it spreading over and over, over, and over again, again. Yeah. in the community. Yes. And our government, you'll realize we have so many priorities. Mm -hmm. This component of adherence counselors, most of the time, it is not strongly supported by the government. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. where you'll see now other partners just coming in mm -hmm. through different innovative models, yes. different channels to see how to be able to, mm -hmm. to support and ensure yeah. that Kenyans, mm -hmm. we are really getting the support that that, 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 we that need. is much much needed. Yeah. All right, how about we take a break? And of course, when we come back, we'd want to understand. So, when it comes to treatment, what mm -hmm. are we looking at? Are there interventions and innovations? Mm -hmm. Um, you know that are available. And of course, Jerusha, you'd also take us through. Um, you know your period and how you know you were able to adhere first of all to medication you went back to see your children and how you're doing right now and of course the role that you're also playing to educate the people i mean you're here today <laughs> you know to help us with the same which we really really appreciate but let's take a break but if you have any question as far as tb or tuberculosis is concerned again you know the drill by now at ntv kenya both on facebook and on twitter is how you can reach us or better yet our lines are open so give us a call and of course this panel will answer all your questions but all that is coming up after the break, stay with us. Choose boldness. Celebrate the skin you're in and dress with confidence with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. The triple layered care of deep moisture serum, precious cocoa butter, and vitamin E enriches your skin for 48 hours. Choose to wear your skin with pride with Nivea. Own your dream home for as low as 1.98 million Kenya shillings in Vipingo Kilifi and enjoy a flexible payment plan of 10% on signing of the letter of offer and the balance in equal monthly installments within 18 months. Supported by world-class amenities and infrastructure, our estates offer a unique, secure environment with a wide range of outdoor facilities. SMS Vipingo to 22365 or call us today on 0740-400-215. Terms and conditions apply. With Glovo, you have anything you want from your city in your hands. Kama unatamani ugali beef ama fried chicken. Order a Glovo Ujaribu restaurant mpya. Mmm, tamu. Kama game inawaka na unataka drinks zaidi. Order a Glovo ushangilie timu yako. Na kama your little one ame mess, dada hapa zimeisha. Order a Glovo and save the day. With Glovo unaweza track order yako na kuongea na customer support which is always available. Download the app and order anything you want from your city. We'll deliver. This Sunday on Property Focus, never been seen before, Vive Suite Collection, it's making rounds and we're about to find out why. This Vive Suite Collection is absolutely magnificent and find out a little bit more about the pricing, the quality, the durability. This Sunday on Property Focus at 5.30pm, only on NTV. What is it? Anna and her sister got into an accident. They're now at the Cherkasi Regional Hospital. Yana, give me the ring now! No, I don't want to. I'm in the hospital. Where's Anna? What happened? Is she dead? Yana, you don't recognize me? I, I'm Anna. I don't understand anything. It's a mistake. That moment when you start to get back to ordinary and ordinary 
feels amazing. Whatever pain you're going through, release starts here. Alright, welcome back and I'm glad that you are still with us and of course the show is your world and today again like we said we're talking about something that is very important all of us need to have the correct information okay not just information but have the correct information about and this is as far as TB is concerned and of course like we said uh, world TB day is usually marked on uh, every 24th day of March but again we want to start this conversation early so that again make sure that everybody really understands what the disease is all about and of course some of the risk factors who's more at risk what can we do to prevent the same but also focus on the treatment as well of course with me in studio we have dr margaret njenga acting ceo ps kenya we have uh, elizabeth mwini uh, county tb coordinator nairobi county government as well as jerusha anyango odwar who is here to share her journey as far as tb is concerned so she is a tb champion and of course thank you very much Jerisha, thank for, you, for being you. with us today okay so before we went on a break and of course we talked about how important um, you know counselors are as far as um tb um, you know is concerned but generally i would say any other disease it's important to have someone to work with you might not be like a professional counselor <laughs> but someone to offer mm -hmm. that kind of uh, support that one needs um and jerusha mentioned um something that you said okay um, and i'm just trying to think yes we can imagine you know isolation and, and just nobody is there to walk with you and this is in case your family your friends because again you have to protect them as well but what are some of the other complications and is that one of the complications maybe elizabeth you can talk about or is it more on you know yeah. alone in depression and, and you know sadness because th thank you, just you so alone. much yeah. uh, first of all being diagnosed with the uh, drug resistant tb it's mm -hmm. not easy yeah. and uh, jerusha said she was taking 24 tablets mm -hmm. those are not uh, few yeah. tablets no. eh? in normal no. uh, tb the one we say drug susceptible tb mm -hmm. the maximum that you give per day is five tablets yeah. so it, depending on your weight mm -hmm. uh, if you're above 70 you do the five tablets okay. per day and that's once mm -hmm. you can see now we have different selection of drugs Mm. and we are giving her 24 it's yeah. not an easy journey no. and it's no. every day for 18 months yeah. uh, that one of course will give you depression and uh, that's why we need counselors mm -hmm. we need to work with the the client who are diagnosed with drug resistant TB yes. and you find that we're also doing uh, strictly dry, uh, direct observation therapy we don't leave the patient to take the medication mm -hmm. we have somebody a healthcare worker who mm -hmm. observe them taking medication mm -hmm. so those are some of the things that uh, we usually tackle and uh, one thing and as Jerusha said yeah. she stayed a long period yeah. before being diagnosed with TB that mm -hmm. is a danger mm -hmm. because uh, one thing the bacteria will feed on the lungs mm -hmm. the bacteria it's on the lungs that's why we're saying People need to come to the facilities mm -hmm. as early as possible okay. and you get complication. Uh, some of these are client of us, yes, mm -hmm. we cure them of TB, mm -hmm. but they are having what we say post-TB complication. Okay. They come with uh, lung fibrosis mm -hmm. and uh, just to mention a fibrosis, mm -hmm. we all know the way the lung is very soft. Mm -hmm. Now your, your lung is as hard as a stone so yeah. breathing is a problem it's a bit difficult, breathing yes. is a problem you find that a part of your lung has fibrosis mm -hmm. you have issues with breathing uh, then there's a destruction of the bronchial tree mm -hmm. you end up getting a complication like bronchiectasis so mm -hmm. all the time you're coughing yeah. we have treated you of tb mm -hmm. you'll end up coming back you still have severe cough Mm -hmm. but this is not tb yeah it's complication because the, the tree has been yeah. destroyed the bronchial tree has been destroyed mm -hmm. then we have even those who have a lung collapse mm -hmm. a, a lung just a collapse it mm -hmm. cannot function it cannot work yeah. uh, we have patient in the kinyata who are on oxygen support mm -hmm. because uh, their lung is not working mm -hmm. okay so these complications are very severe and some of them are permanent yeah they are permanent damage to the lungs mm -hmm. and uh, as also we look at uh, tb of the spine Mm -hmm. 
if it's diagnosed late, you'll end up getting complication. You have people who have a uh, complication of the spine because uh, the, the, the bacteria has fed on the, yeah, on the, 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 the bone, yeah. even to the nerve area. Mm -hmm. So you find this is a person maybe you cannot walk, will end up having paraplegia, mm -hmm. they cannot walk, yeah. then they end up having deformity, mm -hmm. they cannot walk straight. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the complications and they have, some are very severe. We are, mm -hmm. we are happy that um, Jerusha was healed. Yeah. Uh, some we end up treating them mm -hmm. of TB, but they are still coming back to us because mm -hmm. of the, the complication. lung complication. Yeah, yeah which uh, some, some we are trying now with support of uh, WHO. Mm -hmm. We are trying to see how we are going to support this patient who are mm -hmm. coming with lung complication, mm -hmm. post TB, we call it sequelae, mm -hmm. uh, so that we can see how can we support this uh, client mm -hmm. to ensure they, they have a better life. Absolutely. Yes. I yeah. mean, it, the treatment does not just end there when you yes. leave the hospital. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Um, and Jerusha, like you said, you you prayed and uh, you were given a second chance and yes. here you are today mm. um, you know to just also paint that picture so that we people really really understand you know what TB um, is all about so isolation was was one of the things but even aside from that so you said you were working um, you know before you went to the hospital and before you were um, admitted and of course your children as well so can we just talk about how your life was impacted um, you know the fact that you had TB. What are there some things that maybe you lost, you know, um, in the process of treatment? Because 18 months is a long, long, long time. Yes, yeah. when I was diagnosed with TB, mm -hmm. I lost my job. Mm -hmm. I even lost my, my, my younger child was taken by her father, mm -hmm. by his father. Mm -hmm. So it took me time to yeah. get her. Because yeah. uh, the marriage was break up. And uh, the, uh, we were only having this one child with her, him. Yeah. So this firstborn I gave birth when I was at, uh, still with my parents. Okay. So I got married to another man. Mm. So I gave birth to, with the him, so child. another child. Yeah. So he, uh, my, brother, my, my brothers thought I would die. Mm. So they took this younger child to the yeah. father. So because they, they said that the uh, constitution said mm. when the mother is sick, the child shall stay with, with the their father. Mm -hmm. So uh, this man disturbed me before mm -hmm. he got this child. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just three months ago mm -hmm. is when I got the child since oh. 2021. Oh, wow. So I lose my job. Mm -hmm. I even lose my household properties. Because oh, wow. this is a time I was diagnosed at KNH for mm -hmm. 10 months. Mm -hmm. No one is paying this rent. Mm -hmm. Landlord is, is needing her money, his That's money. True. Yeah. It, uh, it he, he took my things mm -hmm. and packed them somewhere mm -hmm. and gave Absolutely. somebody else this house yeah. so that he can get his ra daily rent. That's true. Yeah. So when I came back from hospital, mm -hmm. I was really stranded. Mm -hmm. Where am I going to? Because yeah. now I'm not having a house. So my sister went back to that plot and talked to the landlady mm -hmm. and he, she gave us another house. Mm. But this is a situation that your things were thrown outside, nobody yeah. was looking at them. You have to start from, mm. from uh, zero. We yeah. start from zero. Mm. So that's how I managed it. Yeah. But I see that. And, and Dr. Margaret, you also mm. want to expound um, you know, on more of the challenges that you know, the TB patients would actually face. Because again, we talked about you know, the whole yeah. aspect of yeah. you know, social yeah. um, you know, mm. impact. Uh, exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Certainly, you'll see most of the costs that are costed in the system yeah. are mostly mm -hmm. medicinal for mm -hmm. the medicine diagnosis. Yeah. That's the cost that really is there. But there's this other heavier cost, mm -hmm. yeah. the social impact cost mm -hmm. that really weighs down households. Mm -hmm. And when you look at a mother, yeah. a mother of a household, they're really the ones who are running that household. Yes. And if they collapse, it gets even worse in mm -hmm. that in that uh, particular community. Mm -hmm. So the social component is uh, quite catastrophic mm -hmm. where you'll see uh, uh, patients really, they lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. You're not able to uh, even provide for, for your, your family. Yeah. And this is where there's a call even for employers to be mm -hmm. more empathetic yeah. amongst uh, the employees, mm -hmm. especially those who are diagnosed with, uh, with TB and even other, other social related mm -hmm. illnesses sure. because this is one of the diseases where you, we, we live in a very communal uh, society you breathe out especially in a crowded place somebody else breathes mm -hmm. in the same air and yeah. it does it does uh, spread mm -hmm. tb is um, it's one of the diseases where we say it's uh, tb anywhere is tb everywhere everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere literally yeah. if you true. look if you see the goal for 
um, 2030 is that we can end TB yeah. by 2030. Okay. Let's say, for example, by some form of uh, miracle, mm -hmm. if you look at Kenya, I talked of 90,000 cases diagnosed yeah. uh, last, last year. year. Yeah. If you look at Kenya, and what, let's say one county, by some form of magic, like Kiambu County, mm -hmm. really eradicates or really ends TB, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of movement. Oh, we are yes. a very mobile society. Yeah. So it's not only mm -hmm. a one area's mm -hmm. affair, mm -hmm. but the entire country and the entire globe yeah. really need to rally our, our forces uh, mm -hmm. towards ending this TB because it is possible. Yeah. It has been eradicated mm -hmm. in some uh, places in yeah. the world. Mm -hmm. It is possible to, to end TB and uh, really stop this form of suffering that yeah. can be preventable Prevented. preventable mm -hmm. and just by closing that chain that loop where there's no person who is holding mm -hmm. the disease and because like we said mm -hmm. you know it's, it's it's different depending on the kind mm -hmm. um you know that you have but do we have like latest interventions as well which again i think we'll address as we continue but at least oh, okay. you know diagnosis and treatment uh, yes. for drug sensitive we have talked is mm -hmm. six months uh, straight drugs mm -hmm. uh, we usually have uh, intensive phase mm -hmm. and continuation phase mm -hmm. Uh, intensive phase is where we load the patient mm -hmm. with uh, four drugs. That's what I'm saying. After two weeks, the patient feels better. Yeah. They end up even having poor adherence after two weeks because you feel True. better, they you feel, feel good, you feel mm -hmm. the cough has gone. Mm -hmm. uh, then after two months, uh, we usually check your sputum. If it's negative, mm -hmm. you, we reduce the drugs to two for another four months. That mm -hmm. is the, for drug sensitive TB. Mm -hmm. But for the case of what uh, Jerusha had, drug resistant TB, mm -hmm. it depends on the pattern of resistant. Mm -hmm. We usually have mono and we usually have very severe ones, the extreme ones. Eh? Mm -hmm. For what Jerusha had, she had a multi-drug resistant uh, TB, yeah. which in short uh, resisted two key drugs for drug sensitive, which we use mm -hmm. for the normal uh, treatment, okay. the six months. Right. So she resisted the two key drugs, that is rifampicin, isoniazid, yeah. so we cannot use the first line drugs. Yeah. So our treatment went for 18 months. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing to note uh, that the government has done, mm -hmm. we used to inject patient before yeah. uh, 2020. We used to have a longer term uh, treatment mm -hmm. where we had injection for six months, mm -hmm. daily injection for six months. Right. It was not a very easy journey. Mm -hmm. But after 2020, we, we adopted uh, the WHO uh, injection free medication. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why she said she was not on any injection because yeah. we are now doing uh, free injection mm -hmm. for 18 to 20 months, depending right. on the resistant pattern okay. and uh, one thing to note we have five drugs mm -hmm. uh, five drugs mm -hmm. and you know sometimes these drugs are not combined so mm -hmm. we use single that's why she was using 24 mm -hmm. yeah for drug sensitive the drugs are combined yeah. so you end up having five, five drugs, drugs and they are all combined okay. but for drug sensitive we are yet to get some combination so you have single drugs mm -hmm. like five of them that's why based on your weight mm -hmm. you end up taking one tablet maybe four mm -hmm. another one five yeah. like that mm -hmm. uh, so and uh, this one uh, the patient even me when I'm given the drugs will not take yeah. so then it needs direct observation therapy so we usually have um, through support of a global fund mm -hmm. we have healthcare worker ensuring that the client mm -hmm. take the medication at the facility or at the community level okay. so it depends on the resistant pattern but one thing to note we are not injecting our patient mm -hmm. unless now you resist mm -hmm. the drugs that are there we can go back to the mm -hmm. injectable to the but currently for yeah. drug resistant we are not injecting mm -hmm. we are giving them injection free medication mm -hmm. uh, like for Jerusha 18 months and you do follow up mm -hmm. because one thing of the complication these drugs are very toxic mm -hmm. they are toxic to yeah. the heart they are toxic to the renal you know yeah. the excreted at the renal the liver yeah, yeah. and you find that some of the patient have other comp other uh, chronic illness mm -hmm. we get patient who are diabetic we get patient who are also having renal issues mm -hmm. and they're getting drug resistant tb yeah. so we have also patient that are hiv so we need to recheck on the drugs mm -hmm. and see which are compatible mm -hmm. how can you use this drug so mm -hmm. these are patient that uh, you need a proper follow-up mm -hmm. they have a, uh, what you can call advanced drug uh, reaction mm -hmm. so they are patient that you cannot give medication go home yeah we need to you observe need to we need well. to monitor them yeah. are you feeling this mm -hmm. is your skin changing are you what is that your urine are you having maybe yellowness we need to check that mm -hmm. are you having pain in your stomach yeah. are you having can you is your vision clear mm -hmm. because uh, some of the drugs have effect on the vision so mm -hmm. sometimes we come can you read can you see the color mm -hmm. so we, we we all do, do that all maybe on a yeah. weekly basis sometimes okay. the patient will think because of the disease mm -hmm. they are going down so they'll not be able to to mm -hmm. speak it out 
But as a healthcare worker, you need to bring those issues up mm -hmm. and you need to follow this patient. So most of our patients, we came to realize they are getting complications. They are also uh, dying because of the advanced drug reaction. So yeah. we, these are the patients that we can't release them. Mm -hmm. We need to do close monitoring yeah. and also support them. We Absolutely. do also monthly sputum mm -hmm. follow-up and cultures mm -hmm. so that we know they are really cured. Mm -hmm. uh, and other thing that we do, we also follow their contacts. Mm -hmm. As Jerusha was saying, yeah. we follow their contact. Now she has the children every three months because before she was diagnosed, she stayed with this with children, uh, client. Yes. So yeah. we usually do follow up mm -hmm. of uh, the contacts mm -hmm. every three months. We have to test them. We have mm -hmm. to go and scream. Mm -hmm. Are they having? Uh, are they presenting with symptoms of TB? Because mm -hmm. TB bacilli multiplies very slowly. Mm -hmm. For one to it, it takes over twelve hours. Time, yes. So it takes time for yeah. it to manifest and to show the signs and symptoms. So okay. we also have to follow the contact. Mm -hmm. we need to look at them are they fearing on well even after treatment we do one year yeah. follow up, oh, follow up, oh, follow up of this plan so it's a whole plan that yeah. is there mm -hmm. and we also have uh, monthly meetings mm -hmm. she tell you she'll been on the monthly meeting yes. where we sit down with a, a group of uh, healthcare workers mm -hmm. both from community we, ca we have people at the site we have consultant mm -hmm. so that we can review this mm -hmm. uh, client mm -hmm. and uh, just uh, to see what are they facing are they having any issues Mm -hmm. what else can we support them mm -hmm. so it's something it's a journey that we work with them mm -hmm. throughout the 18 months so like they, they, they yeah. don't feel lonely yeah. although sometimes it's very depressive we, we got patients mm -hmm. who are depressed mm -hmm. because of the drugs some of the drugs also cause depression yeah. you find mm -hmm. a patient who was bubbly mm -hmm. all of a sudden all of a they sudden, are not talking yeah. so this one you can only observe by doing what checkup checkup uh, check okay. uh, yeah. every other time I like yeah. that. Support. Just, support. just to yes. add to, yeah. Yeah, to that mm -hmm. uh, the government has provided very clear direction when when you look at the policy guidelines what mm -hmm. needs to be done across yeah. all level from yes. the national mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. uh, county level yes. yeah. sub county two facilities mm -hmm. there's a lot that is being done and there's very clear direction mm -hmm. so it's also a call to the public to yeah. rise up and support mm -hmm. with all these initiatives that are happening mm -hmm. what the government is trying to do they are they've lobbied for a lot of resources from yes. different partners global fund mm -hmm. stop tb partnership yeah. other NGOs and donors have come in to mm -hmm. support that. So the public also needs to rise to also the occasion. Yes. If, mm -hmm. um, uh, it, if treatment, diagnosis and treatment is being provided mm -hmm. at an, either an affordable cost, in some instances even free, yeah. It is important that uh, mm -hmm. the public also just comes yeah. in and uh, rises to the occasion yeah. to support that uh, mm -hmm. so that jointly we mm -hmm. can be able to, to end TB. And end TB yeah. by 2030, which I like the fact that you said it is yeah. possible. We, yes. can, we can actually uh, yeah. we do, yes, do we the can. same. Yeah. All right. Um, so, Jerusha, at what point were you told, uh, Umepona, you can go home? And, and what, was that, what was that day like? What was that feeling like? So, it was all... Uh, before you are told that you are close to go home, mm -hmm. uh, when the spectrum and culture is uh, tested yeah. and the, the results came negative, yeah. you are now told that you are ready, you can go home anytime. Okay. So it was on August that I was told that now you can go mm -hmm. home. August of last year? Mm -hmm. uh, August of 2021. So okay. 2022. Mm. Uh, 20, on, on uh, 2022. 18 months, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 2022. Yeah. So I was very happy. Yeah. I was very happy because I know that now I'm going to see my children. Yes. Now and I told God that mm -hmm. I will never come back in this world yeah. because of TB. Yeah. Be, because I used to take my drugs properly. Mm. So what was worrying me is about the bill. Yeah, the hospital. It's about the bill. bill. Yeah. I went to the billing at Kenesh and they told me my bill is one point six million. Eh? I said, where will I get this 1.6 mi yeah. million? But nurses used to tell me, Jerusha, stay calm, don't worry. Yeah. Take your drugs, you will come out from this place. Don't worry about the bill. The bill. The bill. Yeah. How will I not worry about the bill? Though I was serving in a chef. Mm. But thank God, mm -hmm. I came out from that place without paying anything. anything. Yeah. Uh, before, uh, when I was cleared, mm -hmm. I went home. Though I was stranded when I got home mm -hmm. because I was not having my belongings. Yeah. But I thank God I came back to a normal life here mm -hmm. like other, pe yeah, other people. Other people. Though, how, how were you received um, by the um, people, by the community? 
I can say that uh, my brothers were still worried, they were mm -hmm. still scared that mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. I'm released but I can still infect mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So when I was coming to, from hospital, mm -hmm. I called my Shemeji mm -hmm. and she came mm -hmm. to pick me. Mm -hmm. When she picked me, when we reached home, mm -hmm. she left me at the gate. Okay. Because she thought when we go back, we got close to her, yeah. she will be infected. Mm -hmm. But to me, I know I knew that uh, according to how I was being counseled, mm -hmm. I knew that I can now not affect anybody. anybody. Yeah, I'm now free. Mm -hmm. I can stay with anybody mm -hmm. because I'm still under dr drugs. Mm -hmm. But I'm now negative, mm -hmm. though I must complete my medication. Mm -hmm. So I stayed like one month mm -hmm. before even meeting my family member, like brothers, sisters. Mm -hmm. Uh, by that time, my, my sister, who is my, my older elder sister, was breastfeeding. Okay. So she thought if she meets me, mm -hmm. she can infect okay. herself and yeah. the, the child. Mm -hmm. So even me, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. But I accepted. Yeah. Um, then after three months, they now started visiting me. Ah, okay. They called me. They mm -hmm. told me, you can now visit mm -hmm. us. Yeah. yeah, that and is how it goes. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, Dr. Margaret, it's understandable, right? And, and I can also imagine for you as well, you were a bit cautious because you do not want mm. to put anybody else in, in uh, you know, in trouble. Yes, you were mm. told you're healed, you're completely cured, mm. you're good to go. But of course, there's that bit of, you know, concern from, from both parties. So then just to make people really, really understand, I'm looking at our time, yeah. <laughs> I really understand, um, you know, what it means for someone to be told, listen, you are now discharged, you are now okay, you can easily go yeah. and, you know, integrate and, and, and interact with people exactly. um, around here. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Very important because mm -hmm. by the time a facility is discharging a client, yeah. they are very, very sure, more than 100% sure mm -hmm. that TB cannot be transmitted once mm -hmm. they are integrated back into the community. Okay. And that's why the system goes to great lengths to ensure mm -hmm. that this client stays within an isolated space okay. for the duration mm -hmm. that it takes to towards getting treatment mm -hmm. unfortunately the patient suffers a lot mm -hmm. while alone mm -hmm. but once they are released to the public it is very safe there's mm -hmm. zero transmission mm -hmm. a lot of tests has been done there's mm -hmm. a lot of reassurance mm -hmm. that once a client is out there there's zero chance of mm -hmm. them transmitting yeah um, yeah, yeah. The, the to, to, to the next person. person. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. just to add, eh, yeah. we do integration also. Yeah. Uh, now we are releasing them to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, most of our patients, uh, they are community-based. Eh? It mm -hmm. means we are treating them from the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we release them from the treatment, eh, we usually do counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you see, Jerusha said she lost her job. Yeah. So we try to do counseling. There's a small support that uh, they usually get uh, okay. through Global Fund. Yeah. So we usually counsel them. Can they start a business? Can they do this mm -hmm. uh, so that as they are going home, mm -hmm. they are out of TB treatment, mm -hmm. uh, they don't uh, look lost, mm -hmm. uh, they are supported uh, throughout. Mm -hmm. So it's something that uh, we usually also mm -hmm. talk to our client. Mm -hmm. As she said, she was told earlier mm -hmm. that now your sputum is negative, we are about to mm -hmm. release you. Yeah. It's, it's preparation. We prepare yeah. our client. Mm -hmm. Yes, now you'll be out. What can you do? Mm -hmm. How can you prevent TB? Yeah. How can you be an ambassador? Yeah. How can you interact? great in the community yeah. even the workspace mm -hmm. how can you also go back to your mm -hmm. working so mm -hmm. it's something that uh, we do to our patients so that they don't feel left out once they are discharged yeah, from they are treatment discharged from, yeah. okay mm -hmm. all right and before we come back to Jerusha, because you benefited from the same you're able to start uh, you know a business uh, which will t uh, take us through um, that very quickly um, but Elizabeth and um, this this concern about the length um, you know as far as treatment is yes. concerned and lots of people ask will we ever get to the point where we have three months at yes. most <laughs> why not <laughs> oh why there are months, trials, right there are trials yeah. there are trials done by who mm -hmm. i know there's a shorter regimen mm -hmm. uh we we had one that uh, we, we were treating for nine months mm -hmm. but this was injection mm -hmm. and our patient were getting a lot of complication mm -hmm. uh, deafness which was permanent yeah they're getting a lot of side effect because okay. it was a pump up uh a regimen for nine months mm -hmm. so that one we stopped i think after two years mm -hmm. it was not working for us but i know there are trials with the new mo molecules that we are using mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, to shorten the length of the treatment, okay. even to six months. Yeah. So these are trials, and I know other countries are doing piloting, mm -hmm. but Kenya, we are yet to adopt it. Mm -hmm. We are still using now the injection free for 18 months, mm -hmm. but it's something maybe when we come, maybe two, three years, yes. it will be there will be a shorter regimen for yeah. drug resistant TB. Which will be a really, yeah. really good even thing. Even for the normal yeah. TB, we used to treat it exactly. for longer. Yes. We used to treat it for longer for one year. Mm -hmm. It has gone back to six months. Yeah. Maybe very soon it will be three months. Yeah, yeah because of uh, many research that has been done. Mm -hmm. But I know for the drug resistant, mm -hmm. the new molecules have been tried mm -hmm. and I know will shorten yeah. uh, the treatment. Yeah. yeah. So I think also in the meantime, this yes. technology mm -hmm. that is being utilized to support, um, Elizabeth talked about mm -hmm. dots, um, directly observed therapy, yeah. where you'd have to be seen by a clinician or a nurse or a healthcare worker, mm -hmm. somebody else to be seen so that they ascertain that indeed you're taking the medicine. Ah, now there's yeah. also use of technology with <laughs> videos and mm -hmm. there are cameras everywhere. So there's use of technology so that there's reduced transport costs oh, yes. for the patient. Yeah. Instead of them having to move to this point to the facility, they can mm -hmm. just use their phone yeah. and uh, adopt other measures mm -hmm. to be able to, mm -hmm. to, to be seen to be adherent to mm -hmm. that medication. Yeah. And it's really supporting the clients in reducing the the yeah, cost, the cost yes, which we talked about because yeah, like you said, we focus just on the medication and they stay, yes. um, you know, exactly. in hospital. We'll talk about the, the whole question about TB, I mean, treatment being free. Yes. Um, really expound on this, but very quickly <laughs> <laughs> on Jerusha. Um, so how are you doing right now? You were able to start your business. Were you, how, how's everything? Uh, you know, how are your children? All those things we want to see. We want to hear the, the good part <laughs> yes. after the long journey on treatment. Yes, yeah. no, I thank God that uh, I'm good mm -hmm. by now. Uh, the, the PSK has helped us a lot, mm. they have helped help us through counseling. Yeah, the, there is a meeting we used to go for counseling with the caregivers All right. every month, which is supported by PS Kenya. Mm -hmm. If we go to that meeting, they give us lunch mm -hmm. and fair transport. Uh, Okay. And if they give her this money, you can mm -hmm. start now your business. Mm -hmm. if, even if it is little, mm -hmm. the, we, you can start a little business mm -hmm. for your mm -hmm. support. Okay. So they have also helped us through empowering us. Mm -hmm. They told us to form group mm -hmm. and we formed a group. Okay. And uh, we registered this group. They supported this group with mm -hmm. the 100,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. uh, this group, this mm -hmm. one thousand siblings, we started now a business, mm -hmm. which is now we are uh, we are a group called Nebula Stars Group. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I like uh, the name yeah. Yeah. Nebula Stars. Stars. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. and we have opened a business which is an hotel. Mm -hmm. Now we have a Nebula Stars Hotel yeah. located at Embakasi North, okay. Dandora Phase One, yeah. opposite Total. Mm -hmm. There we have an hotel. Okay. And there is a good food mm -hmm. there. Yeah. If you That's travel nice. in a long dust road, yeah. please uh -huh. look look where Nebula Stars is. Yeah. You will get nice food from there. Do you have Samaki? Uh, yes, okay. we have Samaki. Okay. We have Omena. <laughs> <laughs> and everything else that one yeah. would need. Okay. <laughs> we have Samaki, we have Omena there. Uh -huh. We have Samosa. Yeah. We have Mandazi, yeah. Liang, Mahamri. Yeah. Yes. Everything that one would want. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. But then again, aside from that, so are you helping the community to, you know, talk about TB, you know, in the and especially mm. on the prevention mm. part? Because again, like we said, we're mm. still on the long regimen. It's fine. Yes. But again, you mm. know, we'll look forward to those mm. days when we have shorter regimen. But mm. in the meantime, we can focus on prevention. So... What are you doing to the community to help them understand about TB? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to tell somebody that yeah. uh, I was a TB patient. Yes. Yes, if I look I look at you and I see you are so sickly, mm -hmm. I can tell you that, hey, please, just visit a, a, mm -hmm. a public facility, yeah. get tested, mm -hmm. TB, TB is mm -hmm. treated, yes. a TB in a TIBA. Yes. It is free mm -hmm. in a public facility. Yeah. It is free even in easy clinics. Uh, mm -hmm. Makanisa mm -hmm. kama mm -hmm. it is free. Yeah. If you are you go there when tested positive, mm -hmm. please take your drugs. Mm -hmm. Kubali juniwewe yeah. na accept it. Yes. If you accept it, yeah. you're gonna make it. It make, makes mm -hmm. it easier for you to adhere to the to yes. the regimen. I like that. I mm -hmm. like that. All right. Um so Dr. Margaret, in terms of then because like we said earlier on, this is a collective mm -hmm. effort just to make sure that um, you know, we, we end this by, by twenty thirty. 
So yes, the government is doing its part, right? But what are some of the things that other partners can do to contribute towards the same? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I want to re-emphasize that the government is the coordinating body yes. so that there's no duplication of efforts. Mm -hmm. huh? The government mm -hmm. is very clear that this mm -hmm. is what needs to be done yeah. mm -hmm. and partners can now step in using mm -hmm. the master plan mm -hmm. that has been provided very clearly by, yeah. by, the, government. by the government. They are clear mm -hmm. that this is what we want to do. This is there's a clear roadmap on how we'll end TB or we are working towards ending TB by 2030. Uh, yeah. And they're very clear on what has been done, mm -hmm. what is ongoing, and mm -hmm. where the gaps really, really are. Right? Yeah. And that's where now other partners now come and step in. If their diagnostic, perhaps the mm -hmm. diagnostic tools are mm -hmm. not sufficient, mm -hmm. then partners mm -hmm. now can step in yeah. into that, ensuring that facilities are equipped, the healthcare workers mm -hmm. are fully trained, mm -hmm. that um, there's also advocacy so that yeah. there's additional resources. Resources mm -hmm. are never enough, enough. Yeah? yeah. But there's that form of, there's mm -hmm. advocacy for mm -hmm. and on behalf of the clients and the patient to ensure yeah. that they are, they, are, mm -hmm. they get um, uh, that kind of, of support. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of uh, behavior change communication that is currently mm -hmm. uh, ongoing by partners like uh, mm -hmm. PS Kenya and also many other NGOs in, mm -hmm. uh, in the country supporting mm -hmm. uh, that as well. Civil yeah. society organizations, mm -hmm. health insurance, so mm -hmm. that health insurance not only caters mm -hmm. for all the other illnesses but mm -hmm. also TB is, yeah. uh, is, is really so. Just working very closely, the National TB Program gives clear guidelines. Any partner who wants to come in and support their doors are open. The Nairobi County Government has shown yeah. very strong leadership mm. in this uh, space with yeah. their, their slogan, let's make Nairobi work over mm. and over again. Yeah. There's very clear leadership in that. So it's about really all the stakeholders mm -hmm. coming to the government and yeah. getting clear direction. Uh -huh. Their on contacts are the available contract, on their yes. website. Yeah, PS mm -hmm. Kenya is also available to provide mm -hmm. uh, that kind of information information media mm -hmm. yourselves also coming yeah. in very strongly to talk mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. and most importantly the individual they must mm -hmm. step yes. up and yes. own ignorance mm -hmm. is no longer bliss yeah yeah people need mm -hmm. to uh, feel fully mm -hmm. empowered educated mm -hmm. show some form of interest yeah. eh? and also supporting each mm -hmm. each other empathy and empathy. stigma mm -hmm. reduction yes mm -hmm. because when they stigma people mm -hmm. delay mm -hmm. in getting to Treatment. seek yeah. uh, treatment I mean, yeah. going, going to seek diagnosis mm -hmm. they take too long even up to mm -hmm. six months sometimes even a whole year yeah. and when you show up late it's mm -hmm. when the disease has already progressed there's a yeah. lot of complications mm -hmm. treatment is more they expensive yeah. so it costs much much more much more i see that term. i see that yeah. all right um so elizabeth would you emphasize more on the treatment aspect and then we'll do a passing shot because uh we literally need to end the conversation but let's talk about the treatment uh you know as far as tb is concerned uh, thank you so much mm -hmm. and as uh, jerusha and also dr margaret have said mm -hmm. uh, treatment is free at mm -hmm. the government and faith-based facility mm -hmm. but uh when we say free there's somebody the government is catering for the, paying cost. for the same yes. yeah it's very yeah. important Mm. Jerusha talked about uh, she had a bill of 1.6 million mm -hmm. and you know all that was paid through NHIF and mm -hmm. through support of the partners through yeah. global fund mm -hmm. so that we ensure a patient who have complication who have TB mm -hmm. while they're on medication mm -hmm. they are able to have the NHIF card mm -hmm. and this is also paid so NHIF okay. is the way to go mm -hmm. to ensure we support our patient okay. so uh, government facilities mm -hmm. faith based is free mm -hmm. we do free diagnosis at the site yeah. and I want to say our healthcare workers have the knowledge we have trained yes. them yeah immediately she went to dandora mm -hmm. she was diagnosed we didn't yes. waste a lot of time, time. because we have uh, we have trained uh, most mm -hmm. of the healthcare workers on tb yeah. they know the signs and symptoms yeah. so it's just a prompt of the client coming they don't waste uh, their, time. their time for the private sector we are doing a uh, private sector also public private sector mm -hmm. as also dr margaret was saying mm -hmm. just to partnership with the private sector mm -hmm. uh, currently i know because of the the expense of mm -hmm. uh, treating drug resistant TB. Yeah. We are not having a private sector treating drug resistant, but they are doing diagnosis. Okay. They are doing diagnosis. We didn't have a proper linkage, but mm -hmm. now we have a linkage mm -hmm. uh, through that partnership. Okay. Once they get a client, mm -hmm. we are able to support the client mm -hmm. uh, because of the issue, you know, drug resistant. It's mm -hmm. not a patient you give them uh, Nendo Kunye Dawa, no. uh, come here after one week or two. So things. it has to be observed. And those, uh, we, we talked about catastrophic cost. We don't yeah. want our patient to incur 
catastrophic cost for us to end TB. Yeah. Okay. So you'll find that once they are diagnosed, mm -hmm. they come to us, we mm -hmm. support this client, okay. isolation, we see how best we can support this client mm -hmm. so that we reduce that amount. Okay. But treatment, okay. even the yeah. private sector, it's also subsidized. Okay. It's not that we can it's say like it's a, no, no, no. Okay. All we right. have partners that is supporting Okay, that. we're literally yes. being chased out of the studio, but my uh, 30 seconds, please, so that I can give, <laughs> give you a parting shot very yes. quickly on, you know, the county government of Nairobi, yes. and of course, the plans in literally five seconds okay we talked about community yes. I, I think we are having uh, of course uh, the healthcare workers they are all trained yeah. uh, we have uh, and, and I know our governor as okay. really we are supporting the community volunteers mm -hmm. they are the ones that are going to the community okay. to do a lot of uh, health education to okay. do contact tracing mm -hmm. so they support the government is supporting this uh, the mm -hmm. county of Nairobi mm -hmm. we have also done the CIDP the mm -hmm. county implement uh, integrated development plan okay. and we have support the, the, the county is supporting TB okay. uh, for us in mm -hmm. Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, we have trained the healthcare workers. Okay, so Elizabeth, I see you. I see you. Did I want you to speak to the people watching us in literally five seconds. Make it please five seconds and then we'll close uh, with Dr. Margaret. Unazambia and Niliwatu who are watching you, uh, you know, this morning. What, can, what I can tell people outside mm -hmm. there, please, please, avoid discrimination, yeah. avoid isolating mm -hmm. uh, people living with uh, TB, mm -hmm. TB is treatable, mm -hmm. TB na tiba. Yes. Na wale bado wako kwa madawa, mm -hmm. tafadhali, T, mm -hmm. kanuni za daktari, meza dawa, na ujue ni maisha ni yako na ni yako. Hey, hey. I like that. All right. That's she, a has it all. Right. she has said it all. <laughs> okay. All right. And we end it here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies, for coming by today. I know one hour is literally like this much, uh, yeah. you know, but, but I'm happy that we've started this conversation. So thank you so much, Dr. Margaret Njenga, acting CEO, PS Kenya. We had um, Jerusha Anyango Odwar, TB champion as well as Elizabeth Mweni, county TB coordinator, Nairobi County Government. Thank you so much. Very insightful conversation we had today. But of course, the conversation continues online. That is at NTV Kenya, both on Facebook and on Twitter and on our YouTube channel as well. That is at NTV Kenya. So the burden, we all have that role, okay, to play. This is as far as prevention, um, you know, and also awareness as far as TB is a concern. So have yourselves a lovely day ahead. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Same time, same place right here on your world but until then goodbye and god bless stay safe thank you